This job will take about an hour to do from start to finish. Howdy, I'm back working on the Eton Lightning TXL50. In this video, I'm performing a repair because we were using this machine and uh, the spark plug ejected out of the head. And I've had this problem a couple of times now with this machine. It seems that because of the design, the head tends to get very hot. And uh, even with the fan on the side blowing air across the head, the, the head itself just cooks. And I think in heat cycling the head, the spark plug, uh, which is you know a steel spark plug inside an aluminum head, is only supposed to be torqued to 15 to 18 foot-pounds. So with the heat cycling, it tends to get loose. So after several uses, if, you, if you're riding the machine pretty hard, the spark plug will loosen up and eventually the threads will get weak and fire straight out. So in this particular video, I have a alternate solution to replacing the head, which I had done previously I had when I had this issue. Uh, and this one is to put in a helicoil into the head. So to perform the helicoil fix, uh, we're going to first take apart the engine. Uh, we've got to take off the side shroud. We've got to take off the front shroud. We've got to take off the spark plug. And uh, we actually, I'm taking apart the carburetor as well because uh, it's kind of in the way. And in order to save myself some time, I'm trying to work with the engine still in the machine, which is possible, although inconvenient, to take the head off the machine. Then, once the head is off the machine, we're going to lock it down in a vise. And I bought this kit to repair the threads on the spark plug hole. And what you do is you over tap this hole and uh, you put in this helicoil in there, which has a thread on the outside and a thread on the inside. So I'm going to use some Loctite to lock the helicoil into the head and then the spark plug will go into the helicoil. So I'm hoping that with a, this coarser thread on the helicoil and also the fact that the steel spark plug is going to be in uh, a steel uh, sleeve almost. I think that maybe I'll be able to put on a little bit more torque. First I'm going to spend a little time uh, cleaning up the head. There are some carbon deposits on here. I was putting on more oil than uh, I was supposed to because on my earlier issues I thought that maybe it had overheated because it ran low in oil. But that is definitely not the case. For this job I chose the OEM Tools 25649 14mm spark plug rethreader kit that I bought from Amazon. This kit is kind of interesting. It has four different sleeves so you can choose the correct length sleeve and also there's a possibility that if you have another issue you might be able to use a different uh, sleeve or maybe use a different sleeve for a different application. Uh, but it has four sleeves and also has a tap in here. Now. I've seen a lot of taps, I've used a lot of taps, and I gotta say, of all the taps I've ever used, this one is actually one of, of the better ones. Uh, you can tell by the shape of the tap, the material that it's made out of, if it is, you know, it, you know, the quality of the tap. So this one's actually pretty good. Uh, the only problem, the main problem I have with this tap is that the head is a 5 8 inch socket, uh, hex, head. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. I have uh, a half a dozen different uh, tap and die sets and none of the tap and die sets have anything that's going to fit on this head. So I was forced to use a ratchet and socket and that makes it a little more difficult to apply even pressure uh, and also to line up the tap so that it's going directly perpendicularly into the head. So this didn't start off great. Uh, I'm using aluminum tapping fluid and um, as I could tell, I could tell that as I'm putting in the tap, the tap is very, very tight. I mean, it seems like it's too big to go into the hole that's currently in the head, which I guess makes a lot of sense. It's because when you're done, you want an entire, you know, perfect thread. So I can tell that the tap isn't going far enough into the head. So uh, I use a couple different tools here. I don't have a drill. I would need a drill that's over half an inch. Uh, here it looked like it's measuring 0.55 inches ish uh, that I would need to drill out and I don't have a drill that size. So I'm using a burr ink tool and a file to uh, kind of carve out the inside of this uh, head so that I can get to a point where I think the tap can get a pretty good start. I'm going in really slowly and I uh, keep on reapplying the tapping fluid. 
So if you look carefully, you can tell that I'm trying to hold up the top with one hand while turning the ratchet with the other. And also, uh, you might notice that uh, I'm not going straight in. I'm you know putting it in a quarter turn, half turn at a time, and then back turning the flipping the, the ratchet uh, lever and backing it back out. And this uh, helps clear the the chips that are being created by the tap as it goes in. So in the end, it ended up making a pretty good thread. Next, I take the uh, yellow coil and insert it in here with some uh, Loctite. I think what I'm going to end up doing is trade out this machine for a larger machine. I think the reason why this machine gets so much abuse is that we've kind of outgrown it now and we're just using it because, you know, we, we have one extra machine, one extra body that could be riding. But in riding on this undersized machine, what tends to happen is you ride it a little harder, you push, you give it a little more throttle, you're running at full throttle more often because it is just a 50cc machine. Now this machine is almost uh, too fast for its own good. Uh, it says that it's rated for ages six plus, but I gotta say, uh, it still sketches me out when my 11 year old rides on this thing because it actually goes pretty quickly. I think it can probably go between 20 and 25 miles an hour. Um, so it can definitely cruise along. Uh, the suspension on this machine uh, does does help a lot. Uh, when I was a kid, I had a Suzuki 125 uh, with no suspension. And I would say that that machine is probably more dangerous because it just it doesn't handle as well, it doesn't steer as well, etc. So the fact that this uh, machine has the suspension gives it a lot better handling. And uh, even though it can't go as fast as the 125 or not even close, uh, it almost seems like it's too fast for its own good. That being said, I'm going to repair up the head here and get this guy back on the road. Thanks for coming. I'll see you next time.